You're listening to the Comic Crusaders Podcast. I am your host, Al Mega, CEO of Comic Crusaders and Undercover Capes. In this show, I'm sitting down with creators from all walks of life to talk about inspiration, process, the lessons they've learned, and a whole lot more. Well, power, what up, everybody? It's your boy, Al Mega. Welcome to a brand new Comic Crusaders podcast. I appreciate you tuning in and hanging out with me today as we talk to another amazing independent creator. I mean, homie here, you guys have no idea. He's a graphic designer, videographer, illustrator. He's a one-man band of comics. I kid you not, yo. He's a one-man army, a one-man force, the one and only Mr. Matt. But Taglia, Wepa, what's going on, kiddo? How you Hello. Doing? <laughs> uh, I'm doing good. Thanks for having me on. Uh, hey. Very excited to be here. Hey, man. I'll, I'll give him this big announcement. He's like, oh, shit. Yeah. You, you are, he's like, damn you, loud Al. <laughs> Calm down, no, calm down. <laughs> I'm I'm from I'm 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 from Jersey. I'm Italian. I can deal with loud noises. Hey, you know how it is. <laughs> you know what's popping. Excellent, kiddo. Yeah, man. So thanks for thanks for hanging out with me today, man. I'll talk about the greatness of everything you do, it's specifically this new project you got out here, you know, Ghost of the Carousel, you know, Dauntless Stories. I mean, this joint looks like amazing fire art story wise. We're gonna get into that in a little bit. Of course, we wanna know about you, Matt. I mean, so tell us, where, where are you OG from? Uh, I'm, I'm from Jersey, um, and I grew up uh, right in the town next to where the uh, Joe Kubert School is. So uh, I grew up with that that resource uh, right right nearby. Say um, word. Did so yeah. you attend it? Uh, I didn't go to, like, college there, but I did. They used to have, like, a um, – I'm sure they still do. They have, a uh, like, a Saturday morning sketch class for kids and – that kind of runs through high school. And so I used to do that, you know, oh, usually cool. over the summers. So, um, so that was sort of like, through, uh, I always had uh, that as like my, you know, it wasn't where I first found comics, but like that was certainly uh, always, uh, you know, knowing that that existed and, and, and uh, um, seeing like comics, like professionally, like that it existed like that was, was uh, inspiring as a kid. Did you meet anyone cool that you aware of at that uh, time? I was aware of the Cuberts. Um, okay. In high school, I had um, uh, um, well, she's doing her own um, comics now. Um, Emma Cubert. She's got an image comic that she was doing, um, but she was she was uh, in my youngest sister's grade, and so okay. uh, I remember when I got some. Uh, some Joe comics that I bring them in and be like, Hey, uh, could you bring those to your home to your grandpa and see if we'll sign them for me? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so that was always, uh, it was, it was, that was cool that that existed um, for me. Uh, Fernando Ruiz was one of the teachers there. Uh, he used to draw Archie comics and I know he does a bunch wow. of Kickstarter projects. And so um, I also knew um, Tom Mandrake's daughter. I went to high school with oh, as well. Cool. And so, Again, and and Tom and Jan both draw, you know, to plenty of comics, and so. Oh, I know. Nice. I got yeah. a dope Tom Mandrake uh, bloodshot. I asked okay. A uh, Valiant bloodshot. He goes, "No one ever asked me to draw that." I right, great. Um, I'm happy to present the challenge. Just do it, and he kicked ass on that mother. Let me tell yeah, you. Yeah, I mean, he's that. So uh, it was that was always cool that I kind of grew up around all these people who are, um, great at amazing comic book artists and so it you know having seeing that it's a possible thing was always a nice reassuring i guess so what was your actual first taste you know of, of like you know getting uh, falling uh, in love if you will with the fandom with the fandom every, every uh, type of the fandom the the transformers comics um hey, i think hey, i got a like uh you know the, the bumblebee toy and then eventually got one of the comics and so that Transformers Generation Two run that they, Ooh, that he, that, well, um, the number one had had the full, the, the, yes, the, full the not your I father's know. uh not your father's Autobot, yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was so. Those were some of my first comics, and those oh, like cool. left a very lasting impression because those ones were awesome. Um, you know, like yeah. all of the Autobot, like in that I issue alone, like you've got them all like dropping out of like uh. They've got the gigantic machine guns and stuff. It just was so over the top action comic that uh, 
you know, was mind blowing, especially when your comparison point was a cartoon, which was not that. <laughs> but and I mean, it, even that. the first generation one had its its stories. I mean, it was yep. dark storytelling. The Autobots weren't these, you know, like winners as we saw in the, in the cartoon. Yeah, <laughs> your your heart gets. I I also got that one where the it's got the cover with Shockwave and it says "Are all dead on the." on the oh, wall behind him. I yeah. love that cover. I got that oh. one, you know, before I think probably before I saw the the before I saw the the animated movie where they kill Optimus Prime, yeah. but like you're kind of um desensitized if you read the comics because like Prime like loses his head within the first 5 issues or something. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, man. They're all it's dead. <laughs> yeah, so, again, so even Megatron goes missing for a minute, yeah. you know, and comes back. I have that issue the return of Megatron. I love okay. <laughs> yeah, I it's so that was sort of my first, you know, fandom, I guess, and then uh and then from there it was just sort of I would grab like random assorted issues that were lying around usually and uh so i have you know a bunch of random x-men comics from the 90s um uh i also had like um found a bunch of like old robocop comics like i have you know uh, um the Walt Simonson ones? uh no well yeah i have a walt simonson one i have a couple of the john paul leon ones oh. that he did and it's it's yeah. it, it's must have been early early in his career because his style is completely different on those books and it what he eventually became um so those were all like random just comics that i used to that i just kind of pieced together from i guess my grandpa would take me to the comic book shop and get that's a good grandpa of, yeah so it was a, it was a grandpa that kind of influenced you and gave you your first comic or was it something you found on your own um no, I think that um, I can't remember who gave me the first one, but he used to take me to the sh uh, a shop in Bloomfield, New Jersey, that we would go uh, to, and man, I'd get like you grandpa. know uh -huh. one one comic per trip. But uh, and that's how I kind of that's when I, where I got all those Transformers comics, and so that kind of spiraled out of control, and, and eventually, <laughs> as, as like, like comic collection does. Yeah. Isn't it a problem? Once you get one, you can't stop. It's a, it's a whole other level of addiction because it all yeah. depends what type of collector you are. are. You are you an investment collector? Are you a a? Uh, for me, I'm a completist. I have a problem. Like, okay, you know, if if, if there's a twenty five issue run and I have six of the issues, okay, I have to finish the run. I have to. I, I have used to. I used to be more uh, uh, completionist. But now I've my like single issues, I've kind of called down to ones that hold sentimental value to me and then ones that I like like to refer to. The only thing that I'm becoming a completionist about is I'm trying to gather up as much of a full run of the Miller Daredevil as I can Ooh, find just because I think that looks uh... they look so much nicer in the like old comic form yes. than they do in the, any of the trades that I've gotten. So. See, I get you there. I'm trying to do that with the Captain America Gruen War run. I actually okay. am missing very few, very few. I mean, a handful, to be, you know, very small handful to have that complete run that he did because he was a legendary creator on that. And I love that run. And then my only other one, the uh, original Conan Marvel run. Okay. That's, that's a, a good tough one to look for. One. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, that's I tough. had some of the keys. I got everything dark horse. I have everything current. I got some of the keys, you know, from the first one. But you know, to get the meat of it, that's the that's the mission and excuse of why am I bringing so many comic books home? <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> yeah. Now it's like it's like I just I, I just dig through back issues to find inspiring like random stuff. I don't even know what I'm looking for anymore. But it's just I'm the trying covers, to... right? Yeah. Well, like I I uh, I was at this um, Ocean City Con in Delaware. A couple. I was in at Ocean City Con in Delaware like last at the beginning of December. And like I found this like Gil Kane Doc Savage. Oh, cool! I grabbed the Mobius um, epic book. I, they had a. I found a bunch of Mobiuses and they weren't moving, and so I was able to finagle a little deal. Like <laughs> I, found a, I found a bunch. Like they had the two young blueberries, and then he had the 
I just, nice. I was like, that's, cool. but that's the kind of weird, that's the stuff that I'm looking for. It's not weird, but it's, I get um, you. But you see me, and I, 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 I fall for this type of stuff. Is it, is it here? Oh, yeah, here it goes. I fall for this stuff. I found this in 50 cents. Ah, oops. That you remember one. these, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I find it in 50 cents. Ignore that four dollars crap. I find it in 50 cents. <laughs> Except for us, the four dollars, folks. He goes, no, no, 50 cents. Ignore that's, that. I said, word. Hell yeah, man. That's always what you're, you're looking for the deals, man. That's, um, I'm yeah, man. looking for the good buys. Yeah. Or now, and I'm like, I found this, um, indie shop um who are if you're in philadelphia they they have a few copies of ghosts of the carousel but uh partners and son and it's like going to spx um but in a comic book shop and so i've been now Ooh. going there occasionally and they have a lot of really cool stuff that you just don't i mean you you just don't find it elsewhere like you don't find it in a normal comic book shop so and that's um, nice i appreciate stops like that i know there's one like that in new york too in, in, in the city in, on the lower east side i believe around there there's yeah, a, which a, shop a, was a, it? A, I forget the name right now. You got to pardon me, man. I know that yeah. they, they that was specifically with Indy, and they would only order Big Two for subscription. Like, yeah. whoever subscribed, that's it. Is it going to be on the shelf? No. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, yeah. business is business. You know, you're not going to say no to money. Yeah. But it's nice that they choose to celebrate Indy as opposed to the big two in that particular shop. If I yeah. remember, I will send you the message. I will remember eventually. Okay. I'm just yeah. trying to remember if I ever went there. <laughs> yeah, man. Well, I know it was in downtown or Indy. So, um, all right. So here you're doing the school. So that really, did that really kind of inspire your creative journey doing that stuff on Saturdays with the kids? Um, I think it's so, probably. In some ways, yeah. I mean, I always was drawing, so um, so I have kind of, you know, I I I didn't, um, you know, I didn't start trying to take comics more seriously as like trying to do them and publish them myself until uh, more recently. I colored some books at Boom uh, yeah. in twenty. It's probably like. 2014 2015 now um okay. i did a i colored dead dead letters with um chris visions drew it uh which was it was it was cool um i i just it was it was a lot of time and it wasn't really what i wanted to do in comics and then i drew a book called indoctrination with um mike morisi uh around that time 20 probably came out in 16 or 17 and uh that came out through z2 and and at the time i definitely wasn't ready to do a monthly comic okay. <laughs> so i learned a lot of hard hard lessons doing that uh and so it wasn't until really last year that i started kind of you know i've been always drawing but i hadn't really put anything together again and so last year i finally started getting back into it Excellent. or Excellent. 2019 i guess is when i started and yeah. and i've been producing pages since and putting putting stories together so how did you find those early opportunities there that does you know step in i mean who did you meet man you know you know, uh, i work with this guy this guy ready i mean early <laughs> on what's popping damn how you got in uh, uh, <laughs> the boom the boom people reached out to me out of the blue uh i just really? i had my work on it yeah i had my wow. work on a website on my website and uh you know like i post like art semi frequently um to social media but i i i, I honestly don't don't know they found my website um huh. and so that was nice uh and then and then mike um the colorist for roche limit uh he was got busy and he couldn't do the second volume of the book so mike reached out to me and i colored roche limit volumes two and three which was an image comic that 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 he did and uh and then we we did indoctrination together because I really wanted to draw a book. And then, you know, he kind of he he you know to Mike's credit, he gave me a lot of heads up and tips and stuff how how to avoid like screwing up deadlines. And I I just I didn't I didn't do it. <laughs> and uh, I it, I don't think the book was late, but the art I'm not very proud of the art. I could have done I I just I I hadn't figured out a process yet. And it's it's um, drawing comics is a lot harder, especially on a monthly deadline and especially when you add in like you know if you're working um 
which I was and which I, you know, a steady job and which I still do is when you have a regular job and you're trying to hit a monthly deadline and you're, you know, drawing and coloring the book yourself, it, it's, it takes a lot of time. And if you're not disciplined about it, um, it's, you're not going to put out work that you're happy with. Um, and so now I'm, I've kind of, um, I, I'm, you know, ghost of the carousel I did on my own time. And, and I basically, when I pitched it to Dauntless, the book was, was done. Um, I mean, I had, I had like six pages left or something like that, but you know, the book was for, for the most part, it was done. It was done before we started selling it. So, um, you know, that's been, that's my policy kind of going forward now is that if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna sell a book, it needs to be done because I don't want to have to, I don't want to do a monthly deadline again. I don't want to do a monthly. You're done with that. You're done with that. I just, it doesn't work with your, with, you can't, I don't, I don't know how you can do it. Like if you have a job, that's not just, if you're making comics full time, then absolutely you can do it. But if you're not, I, uh, it's yeah, just I, so much. Especially this. I, I got you, man. Cause you know, it, it's also life, you know, you got to live too. It can't just be all about right. work. So, you know, it, it's work, it's work again. I mean, wh- when do you have time for you too? In well, this is everything the- that, you know, <laughs> then the nice thing too is that the, the comics that I'm making now are all like for me, which is nice. Like hey, it's all so stuff that I just fun. wanted to get off my chest. Yeah, like Ghost of the Carousel was pretty personal, and then I have another. I'm like 45. These are the layouts for the next Ooh, book that I'm working tease, on. What a tease! He's like, he makes sure you put them sideways. They make sure I'm a tease. Well, oh, they're they're layouts, so they don't look okay. great. Um, <laughs> but I'm I'm. This is the next the next thing I'm working on. So there you are. Look at that in your head, kiddo. Excellent, excellent. So all right, I'm gonna start showing off some pictures over here. You know, because cool. you know, I want to show off some, some of the artwork that you have from this amazing project. All right. There you go, man. They'll give you a double whammy there because I know I know you said that picture's old, but then <laughs> do I miss that T-shirt? Yeah. Folks, if you know where he could get this T-shirt, it, it was a walking. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was a Walking Dead T-shirt. I, <laughs> I, I was. Um, I guess I was a little thinner than it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> and talk about this color, man. This is this yeah, fantastic, bro. Thank you. Um, uh, I did this book in um two. I drew it in two parts. Let me just get the ash can. Like I, I had initial initially it in 2019. I thought, oh, I had produced this like little ash can version of it, which was the first. It was like the first 12 pages or whatever. You know, so, so it ends. Close that again. There, there you go. Yeah. So this is the uh, okay. ash can version, and so I put this together in 2019, and I was like, oh, I'm gonna go to the cons, and I'm you know in 2020, like I hit SPX and I had it. Um, I was like, oh, 2020, I'm going to go to cons. I'm going to have it. It'll be like a business card. Like, it'll be very exciting. And then 2020 happened. There were no cons. Um, <laughs> so, but I had a lot more. I ended up deciding I had a lot more things to say. And that's how I got to the, the full book as I added a lot more pages after that. But so, um, so COVID kind of helped out in the creative process, if you will. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's I, I, I've me been uh, producing so much more than i normally i think than i used to because i've had just a lot more to think about and a lot more ideas um because of what's been going on in the world and everything man, and look at this man it's all about being in an upside down world man. i think that's how yeah. most people feel yeah <laughs> so yeah and the, the i i hope the book is something that you know people can kind of bring some of them themselves into it so and I want to thank you for going with that black and white look. Uh, I'm a big fan of that. Obviously, as a Conan fan, Savage saw it, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you know, I saw this. I was like, damn, homie's killing it. Thank you. Yeah, I, 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 I certainly didn't want to color it. <laughs> don't <laughs> if I can avoid coloring, I, uh, I do it. <laughs> it takes so long. Nah, but look at this. I mean, so you doing everything: the lettering, the mm-hmm. art story i mean this is like, like, like i had stated right the one man band yeah so i mean these are the um original pages or ooh. Like, so ooh. i i did the tones for the second half digitally because i just 
I just I ran out of tones and I just the I just didn't feel like waiting to buy more. So um, these pages that you're showing are like I what I wanted to do is I wanted to make like a trailer for the book. And so yeah. I kind of cut and paste, cut up pages and panels together um, to try to kind of give uh, the reader like an idea of like, OK, like what the full thing is about, because if yeah. you just saw the first five pages, one, my like drawing style changes um, after the first 12 because I yeah. draw the rest of the book with a brush and not I, I ink it with a Ooh. brush and not with a nib like with a pen well, so I want to make keep... that choice within the within the creation of the book um, I just I started um, I think when I started the book I was more I don't know I'm not sure I the second half I just wanted to ink with a brush I think it's because it was faster and it was more I wanted to have it be feel more like emotional. And okay. I think that the the pen line is a little like dead. And so the the brush line is way more um, like has a lot more life to it, I think. More energy on, on, yeah. on, on the page. For sure. That was sort of my that was my general concept. Yes. But it's still a beautiful art, homie. I mean, you Thank did you. again and Damn, look at that. And Diablo is right. Holy yeah. smokes, bro. I mean, where are you digging in for design? Um, that's it's you know loosely based on the Jersey Devil. So yeah. or my conception of the Jersey Devil. Of so. course, of course Jersey <laughs> gonna bring in that Jersey monster. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so um, yeah, so that's that's sort of that's where all that comes from. So is this yeah. where the kind of story is about? Is it a Jersey Devil type of story? Oh, no. What are um, people gonna get here? It's, 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 explain, man. Explain a little bit. What, what uh, people are gonna be enjoying here in this wonderful, beautiful looking book you got? It, it, I would say it's um, uh, it, it's a book about uh, confronting your past demons and deciding what you want to do with them. Um, either you can let them drag you down or you can uh find a way to live with them and uh and escape so that's that's the gist of the book it's it's um uh yeah i mean it's a, it's meant to be i, I you know it, it my hope is that people can read it and put some of themselves into it it's um you know it's not a heavy dialogue book it's not a heavy plot book it's a uh, I think it's more of like a mood or an emotion. Um, like a, it's like a feeling. Uh, so I would, I think that I was way, I was far more with this influenced and th thought about it way more as like an album than I did oh, I as like, really? uh, like a story. So let me ask, sense. is there a soundtrack in your head that you could think of that, that, that maybe people could relate to here as they uh, read this story? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's the obvious touch points of like Springsteen, uh, you know, somewhere between Tunnel <laughs> of Love. The, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's what I mean. That's what I was listening to. Uh, uh, you know, there's the you know it's, it's gonna be a cliche but also like sinatra's like uh like like um uh saloon albums as he called them it, so i mean it's more supposed i again my sort of goal with it is it was meditative for me to draw it and to make it and so my hope is that people reading it um can also sort of exercise their demons by kind of going through it um that's that's the lo very lofty goals for it, but um, and, you know, I I, I think I, I'm a big Paul Pope fan, like as for comics, and I love his work, and he often I think um, I, I've you know read a bunch of like interviews or articles by him, and and uh, you know that are in some of his books and whatever, and and I think he relates a lot of um, he has a whole theory about music and comics and. Um, I think that there's a lot of things that comics and music have in, have in common and, uh, and, and comics has a unique way of, of exploring some more abstract ideas with a mix of words and pictures and, and the way you kind of put a comic together that, you know, I, music does as well. And I think it's harder to do in something like a novel or, uh, 
or even a movie, it's harder to just make it like a mood because you can't just kind of like quickly kind of, you can't, you know, you can kind of pick up a comic and you can kind of flip through it in a rather quick yep. fashion and experience it quickly in the same way that an album isn't necessarily like, it's not like a, uh, you know, you're not stuck there for two hours trying to watch it, you know? Yeah, at least we hope not. I mean, they they, 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 they do try to make those, those double albums nowadays. That people that have no business singing. Yeah, singing. <laughs> yeah but they got, they got, you know, there's there's certain songs that I think that kind of give you, you know, you want, listen to certain some songs and they just transport you immediately. Um, yeah, I, I could say yeah, that new um, album by, by a homie, The Weeknd, it, it is yeah. a great, great album. That that does you know? My wife said it early on. Oh, he he reminds me like an MJ just in his style mm -hmm. with this and the music that he's bringing it, you know. And, and after listening it along with with her, I was like, oh man, you yeah man, I feel it. And then I'm starting to see the same commentary. I was like, that was a good album, and it would bring me back to when I was the kid enjoying the yeah. you know, old school MJ music when he was early on, you know, before before the the the, the hair incident. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so I I don't know I I comics i think has a, have a special place like that too you know like they can transport you yeah i love this well i, I well, anytime i see an old comic i am always taken to my past so I got, even yeah. with that i got nostalgic i remember holding that as a kid and i actually have somewhere i found the ones that you would put in a binder remember mm -hmm. those from from the marvel universe explanate so you could have this whole binder looking more pro so yeah i actually found a, a pack of sheets i was like oh this is so cool so Another goal, maybe that I wanted to find all the sheets. <laughs> yeah, well, and that's a fun thing. Like, like there are certain like comics that I have that. Oh, well, that's my copy, and I know because the cover fell off because I read it so many times. Like that, you know, that's that's part of the nostalgia factor too. I still got mine. My first comic is still over here, you know, but yeah. it, it is falling apart. But I have it, and I do. I did buy. A, a new one just, mm -hmm. just to, you know like yeah when i find the clean copy here it go this is how it used to look <laughs> yeah that's sort of i gotta uh i i've been i was thinking about that recently with the transformers generation 2 run where it's it, like i i want to i i need to replace a few like i need to get a couple clean copies because do it m most of them are missing covers yeah but do it do it man you won't regret it when it's something like that you love uh you won't regret it man you're gonna just be so happy like you know hey it's it's your thing yeah you know what i mean i dig that so how did you hook up with dauntless though and, and why put your book on dauntless because the way that you're talking is like yeah i got the freedom i gotta have the time i mean you know is that what dauntless is you know allowing you some some great time and and freedom to work as an independent creator well i have um i'll show a couple we're starting to tease it, so I don't mind showing the pages. But um, I'm working on another book that actually got uh, there. Um, that's oh, that's that. art oh, going to come gorgeous. from uh, Dauntless as well. And so gorgeous. this one was actually um, Jesus. Uh, so that's their preview. Um, this one got. This one I'm working with a writer. Um, wow, um, uh, Yoni Hog, uh, and wow. um, and so that got he. W we talked to Dauntless about this that book, and um, it'll get announced soon. Um, and so I had Ghost of the Carousel already kind of done and I was just debating what I, the heck I was going to do with it. And then so mm -hmm. I just I kind of it was kind of it was this way to dauntless and see like, hey, like, you know, I have this book that's done. I, you know, I want to get it out there. I would like people to be able to read it. Um, and I didn't you know, I didn't really want to do a Kickstarter for it because I just didn't I, I hadn't run one before and I so much effort again you have a day job <laughs> yeah well and it's you know it is uh it's gonna be a pun but it's daunting to run a kickstarter for the hey, first time. Yeah. Yeah, 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 and man. so uh uh i didn't i didn't um i didn't have the confidence to do that and but so i i talked to marcus and you've had him on your show right haven't you yeah didn't you you oh, had him sure. yeah and so i talked to marcus um about it and uh yeah, I just said, look, I got this book, Ghost of Carousel. It's done. If you if you 
if you want to do it, let's, you know, I, yeah. you can publish it and it'll be great. Um, uh, if you don't fine. Um, but you know, it's done. And so that's it. I find that it, it, I think it helps a lot when you can say, well, like this thing's done and it's going to happen, whether you you're in, whether you want to do it or someone else wants to do it, like it's happening. Like I will put it out on my website at some point if, if not. So, um, so when I, that, that was kind of why, so it was, you know, and Marcus was very nice to work with. And um, I think it allowed for the two of us to also like, you know, to soft launch some stuff basically and to figure some things out. Um, That's great, man. Yeah, he had some great energy when we had him on. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, um, yeah. So it's, uh, it was a nice learning process for the two of us. Um, I had to, I learned some pre press stuff that I needed to figure out anyways and, <laughs> um, put, put all those things into, um, you what know, was your biggest put... lesson? What was your biggest lesson? You say that you, that you, uh, it's something, it, you know, something that surprised you the most. Like shit, I didn't know. <laughs> well, this one, um, I learned a lot about fixing things up for print. Um, I, uh, <laughs> I always screw up my formatting, and so I finally figured that out, which was okay. really is really helpful. Um, the other thing too is I do think I, I I think I rushed the ending of the book. Um, like I think if I if this when this hopefully you know knock on wood this print run sells out, um, maybe the next print run I'll add a few more pages to it. <laughs> um, I, hey, uh, hey, hey. I don't tell me don't tell me you have the 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 uh, the, the director's cut too hiding somewhere. Uh, there. It's not hiding anywhere, but I like I <laughs> I, I think about it. Um, I guess the, the other thing um, that I, I think that I, 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 I learned was again, it's like, this was the longest thing I've done since I did indoctrination. And that was spread out over a number of months. And so like, um, you know, it's, it is, I think making a comic is like, it's, it's a, uh, you know, you kind of got to work yourself up to like different page lengths. And so I did a comic with Doug Wood in 2020, called leap m that was like a 24 pages that we did a kickstarter for and so that's at the printer now um was that your like, first experience in a kickstarter yeah and so we ran that kickstarter uh in november so that was that was cool so now i feel like i, I broke I broke that so i can i can do that now if i want to um but uh uh y- yeah so but anyway so like doing completing ghost the carousel was double the length of leap m and so the next thing that i'm working on now is double the length of ghost of the carousel and so like every time it's like reaching that like you know so like this is 40 i think it was like 45 pages okay um and then now i'm up to like 48 pages on this project oh and so but it it's taken me to, to lay out the 48 pages of this project has gone quicker than the 48 pages of this, if that makes sense. I understand you're getting more comfortable in your craft. So you yeah, know, as, as you do that and you're getting used to it and, and without having that heavy deadline and doing something you actually enjoy doing, you know, you're putting, you know, the best part of yourself in it. Yeah. You, know, you could fall asleep and it's going to be all by itself. Just going, you know what I mean? It's just, yeah. Just ba- basically. <laughs> <laughs> At the Gremlins, who drew that? That looks so great. Oh man, uh, that's great though. You are an amazing artist, man. Thank a you. Writer. I mean, to, for you to take on, you know, all these tasks as a creator. Thank you, bro. Thank you for sharing Thanks. that, man, of yourself and being brave like that. You know, it's a Thanks. daunting task, like you said. No pun intended. <laughs> to to <laughs> take on to take on all these different roles as the creator, but here you are and having what I believe is great success today because this book looks gorgeous. Thanks. You know, and I can't make people put their hands on it and look what you're already talking about. You got more coming and mm-hmm. just those teasers alone. People, did you not see that that craft? The, the oh. next the next one will be I the next Dauntless book should be announced sometime like I think we're aiming for March, April. Okay. Um great. so people should sign up for their email list for that. Uh, yes, 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 so, yes. So, it, um, so they go right there to Dauntless Stories, right? And, and mm-hmm. while they're checking out Ghost of the Carousel, yeah. they'll go ahead and, and most likely, you know, sign up for the newsletter on the homepage, right? Right, for sure. And I mean, you could just 
when you when you buy Ghost of the Carousel, you can just sign up for the newsletter too. I think there you go. It does <laughs> buy it, sign up, get all the goodies. Absolute <laughs> hell yeah, yo! You guys won't regret it. I mean, the, the book it, is gorgeous by an amazing one man band. He's done. And the next book's gonna be in color too, which I'm. Oh 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 yeah, shit! So. Are you coloring? Wait a minute. Yeah, I'm coloring it, and I'm. You're doing it. Oh shit! I'm dreading that, but it's gonna happen. But what what made you want to go that route? Was that a personal uh, decision or a no? I decision? think it. I think I think for the book, it needs to be in color. Okay. Um, yeah, okay. there's there's things there's things that like um scenes wise and stuff that I just I I think it adds a dimension that it needs. Um, the the other. So this is the other personal project that I'm doing, and that's going to be in black and white. So okay, so okay, great, great. You still balance more things black out. <laughs> like, please, all right, got you, got you. Two yeah. black and white, one color, that's enough. All right, mm-hmm. then another three black and white, then one color, then another four yeah. black and white, then one color. To space you know, them out, <laughs> and then God, you know, God willing, I find a colorist someday. Hey, it's gonna <laughs> happen. But you know, listen, with these type of creations and the work you're gonna about to bring to the world. Everybody's gonna be knocking at you. Know, like, yo, can I be on Team MB? <laughs> oh yeah, yo, it's gonna happen. I see it, you know. And then you know, you're working with a great publisher right now with Dawnless. I see what he's yeah. doing. I love it when these independent, you know, presses come out, but they actually care because he definitely showed that when I had him on. He no, cared. he de- he definitely does, and um, you know, it's I. I I think that it's, you know, it's a building process. So we just kind of start, I think everything at Dauntless has just started essentially. So um, it'll be interesting to see where everything is at, at the end of a, this year. Um, because it's, I think it all, it all just kind of, it's going to snowball, which is going to be nice. Yeah. So before we go two last questions, first mm-hmm. up 2022 is here. Any appearances by you anywhere? Do you have any plans for- to attend any conventions in your area? Uh, none that I know of yet. I I I would like to. I had a great time at the Ocean City Con in Dell in Maryland, um, okay. at in December. Um, that was a lot of fun. Nice, um, nice. Was it packed? Uh, like it was busy, but like they did a nice job of um moving people through. Like Excellent. it never felt super crowded and they kept the the lanes were all pretty like it was nice because that what happened was all the sort of like covid protocols they decided to adopt ended up making the actual like being at the con more pleasant because people just had a little lot more room to to roam a bit like like the lanes the lanes (laughs) were wired or you know like i i i i you know uh i did new york city con a number of years ago and i used to go like every year when i lived up there um and it was like always like hurting cat like it it was always a nightmare walking around no, no, you're walking like this with your book bag yeah and the bags is like yo is that a con box there let's start steering <laughs> let's start steering you know it, <laughs> i like a, oh, horrible i know i trust so me, I know. that was fun I'd, but i'd like to um i'd like to do more shows this year but i guess we'll see sort of what what shows go on are going on and when i don't know what's in my area i don't know yeah, things we'll are coming. Things are coming, man. You know, Big Apple Con for sure. I know that you know they they uh-huh. to do that. That's a, a little something, but hopefully we we'll get a bigger show where you could really you know uh, showcase. I, I know last year Partners and Sons did like a, a small press kind of expo type of thing in Philly, cool. which I'm hoping to do this year. Ooh, um, interesting. And so just, I'd like to do more like things that are easy, easy like. Within, within a quick drive from home. I don't want to deal home. with too many people and, and close. Well, and I, I don't want to go <laughs> deal with too much travel. Is really the thing. <laughs> I get it, man. I'm, it's scary nowadays. I, I don't blame you. So, well, um, not it's just it's just traveling with books is a pain, man. Well, you're telling me I, as well. So I saw most of my collection. I used to carry oh, as I move like 50, 60 long boxes. Oh, that's a nightmare. Tra- oh, yeah, for me and my back. Uh, that's not good. look at me that's your shit to do i'm like oh wow no one's gonna help me yeah yeah suck you know what i mean <laughs> yeah. yeah so i got rid of most of that like i said i have very little from what i am actually keeping and what i'm yeah. still trying to get rid of um do you have any pieces of advice for creators i mean you've had a journey already man you know who working with some cool publishers and here being creative on your own and not even more common what type of advice can you give, you know, creators in that type of 
you know, space now where they, they start in a, you know, hit the ground running? Um, my, my general advice, and I don't, I don't, I don't know that everyone likes it, but my usual advice is find something that you enjoy doing for like work and make time in your life to create and it's way more freeing that way like i think that if you put all your eggs into making comics your career it can probably be it can be really difficult um but if what you're want to do is you want to tell your own stories or if you want to just create for your own purposes i think that it's much better to 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 put what you're really passionate about out into the world and you will you'll find a lot more success that way and i can't it you know you can't be guaranteed that's going to be financial success but i think you'll be much happier with what you put out um you know i uh however if you do want to try to make a career of it know that it's a ton of work um it's not it's not easy uh deadlines are real and they suck <laughs> um and um you know uh i think it helps a lot to do some small projects of your own before you do anything else because it allows you and this is a hard lesson that i learned is but like when i did indoctrination like i couldn't even decide like oh am i doing this traditionally or digitally like and mm. so i kept flipping back and forth between the two which was a nightmare um for like for plenty of reasons, but like, it also makes it look disjointed. Um, and so like, I think that producing some short stuff for yourself and working out all of those, um, problems before you try to do anything where anyone else is relying on you is a smart thing to do. Mm, there so, you go. That's Prep. that's my general thought. Prep like Batman would yeah. and be ready Mm -hmm. ahead of time get her done yeah. yeah and make stuff that you like like don't don't try to guess whatever someone else wants because you'll never you're never going to figure it out exactly man because if you don't bring who you are from the beginning that they're gonna think they think it's something else you never like you say gonna be happy mm -hmm. so that's what I'm, yeah you're absolutely right do what you love because that's you know it's going to really show best you know and how you especially when you present yeah you know Ain't that the truth? I love it, man. I'm digging it, bro. So I want everybody to visit Matt's website. All right. Fire stuff over here, man. Are you taking commissions by chance or do you just, um, just do book? Do you do commissions? I, I, I took commissions for the Leap M Kickstarter. I have to finish a couple up. I do, I mean, like, I, I will take them. Um, okay. if people want to email me, that's great. Uh, or they can DM me on social media, whatever that works. Um, and usually if I post any fan art, like that stuff is totally available for sale. It I, is. Oh, yeah. Cool. I mean, like I have, um, like just a okay. flat file over here that all of that just goes into never to be seen again. So, <laughs> um, if, if I ever post anything that's, um, fan art, uh, Unless if someone else has already spoken for it, it's it's a hundred percent available for sale. Well, you, you hear it. And what's the typical size of the pictures you do for fan art? Uh, most of that stuff is nine by twelve. Do you hear that? Although folks? I'm, I might be out of nine by twelve paper soon, so it might they might be switching over to eleven by fourteen. So, oh man, yeah. check that out! Oh shit, even bigger. You're gonna get everybody else jealous. And, and, <laughs> and okay, so just this one more question then. Yeah, so is that? Is there any particular character you like drawing? Um, not not particularly. I like um, you know, mostly characters that I've I I read uh are like or that I have some sort of affinity for. Uh, the Punisher. Um, I don't like draw like I like Daredevil a lot, but I I, I don't draw a good Daredevil. I don't think. Um, the turtles are fun to draw. Um, I did uh. I did a pretty. I did a Godzilla recently that I really liked. Ooh. Um, that was a commission. It's. I don't know where it is. Um, what else did I do? Um, that was good. I don't know. I. 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 I any range of things, but um, you know, I, I anything like the like I. I like Batman, but um, to draw Batman, the question. Uh, any sort of Miller characters are good. Um, yeah, I love the like a Ditko Spider Man 
I'm a, I'm a, I'm a big Ditko fan. I like his his work as well. So. Oh yeah, man, his stuff was wild. Loved it. Yeah, Loved it. it was very imaginative. <laughs> For sure. I oh, I did a Doctor Strange that I was very happy with that I think sold. I think I sold that one. Um, but yeah, that I that, all sorts of stuff. I'm I'm pretty open. Um There you go. You hear it, folks? They want yeah. some OG work and stuff, but what you gotta be aware of is looking for this wonderful story on Dauntless uh stories.com. Ghost of the Carousel available now. <laughs> right, what's the price point on that, baby? Uh I think it's eight dollars. Um look at that. Well, yeah, it and it's it's something. over. I mean, it's oversized, so it's um. Oh, I see it on that black yeah, label yeah. size, right? Yeah, and so I mean, it's it's basically at the same size as the artwork. The artwork was all oh, nine damn. by twelve. So, oh wow, it, look at it! That. Actually, might be bigger than the art. So it's almost an artist edition. <laughs> oh man, gorgeous, gorgeous! You see that, folks? Are you gonna get eight bucks? You can't, you can't lose there. All right, so you know, beg your comic shop to get this, but you know, go to Dauntless right now and get your copy right yep. now. Sign up to that mailing list, you won't regret it because they do have a lot of wonderful projects. You know, when he sees you on some of that good stuff, please follow Matt also on social media, Instagram and Twitter at Matt J Bat, which is Matt Double T J B A Double T. All right. And that website, again, again, you can hit him up there as well. If you're interested in the type of commission, but take a look at his work and become an instant fan like I did. Matt, thank you so much for joining me today and chit-chatting and celebrating and, and talking about the greatness of, of your projects and this fantastic book, bro. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. This was uh, really great, and I appreciate all you're doing for uh, small comics. It's It's awesome. Nah, man, that's what we're here for. Comic Crusaders, man. Crusading for the best. Crusading for independent. Let's get her done. That's right. So, everybody, thanks for tuning in. Much love. I'm out, man. Hasta la próxima. Later. Thank you for listening to the Comic Crusaders podcast. If you like the content, please subscribe and turn on notifications. Also, please visit ComicCrusaders.com and our extended podcast family over at UndercoverCapes.com. And also, make sure to download the Comic Crusaders app on the Google Play Store today. 